The class is called Black Devils and Racial Supremacy. And I'm going to tell black and white history. We're going to stick with black history, African-American history. And this is just the United States, North America, and white history. I'm going to, I'm going to take sort of extreme positions on it, right? But I'm going to tell the history as though it happened in the reverse, okay? So that black people are on top and white people are on the bottom. Here's what happened, y'all, you ready? And I got volunteers before class, so we're ready to rock. They have an idea of what's going on. My great, here's how migration happened. Black people were the first ones, you all, right, were the first ones to have this, to go into the new world. And let me say, take the gold from Native Americans, exploit the indigenous people who were here, try to enslave them, capture them, kill them when they didn't work for you. All the dirty, rotten stuff that we talk about happened throughout history. That was you all, right? You came out of Africa. You went to the Americas. They decimated the populations that were there. You brought diseases. You just like did really horrible things. You committed the genocide. In fact, the longest, most extensive genocide in human history was committed by black people in this story that I'm going to tell. It's a reverse story, so this is fiction. But everything I say in this story is true to the best of my ability to make it true. So everything I say about these folks, the black devils, is actually, in real life, what the white devils actually did. Okay? So when we talk about decimating Native Americans. It was Europeans who decimated Native Americans, etc. But we're switching it. So you all came out of Africa, you went to the Americas, but all the Native Americans, you killed them off, and so you had this ingenious idea, hey, we need people to work for us, because we have all this land here now in the Americas, and we need someone to work the land, and so we're going to go to Europe. We're going to get white people in Europe because there are all these poor Europeans up there and they don't know any better. That's your ancestors, right? And they don't know any better. They don't have any idea. And so you're going to go get them. Ingenious. Brilliant. And you're going to create this form of slavery we call now chattel slavery. So you're going to bring boatloads upon boatloads upon boatloads of white Europeans over to the Americas, enslave them in perpetuity, the Americas, because you also brought them, you know, all these white people to Haiti and Barbados and the DR and so on and so forth, right? And man, you all were just rotten and evil. Some of the stuff that you came up with. But hey, whatever. Got it? You all, by contrast, have you lived your life in this other position of studying this history and understanding this history and kind of having a sense of what happened, studying it in a different way than they do? Because, you know, these folks, the black devils, they have a reason to see themselves in a positive light because nobody wants to see themselves in a negative light. These folks, by contrast, you're always trying to convince these folks that of the, the history that you see and you come to understand. Okay? You got it? Everyone understand what's going on here? And what I want you all to do is just, you're just gonna, I'm just going to come to you for some responses here and then. And I'll ask you questions and we'll see where we're at. And... Okay, let's go to the first slide. So, here's some pictures of your ancestors picking cotton. You know, like, you see a lot of these photos, right? Like, you know, when you read, when, you know, the history books, you all pay attention to this stuff. You know, you all, of course, because you write the history books, and because, you know, you're really more in control of the message, so to speak, yeah, you give it like a page or two until you really have to, but mostly, you know, you sort of skim past it because it's not that important to you. To you all... This is really important. These are your ancestors, right? And then the other side of the ancestry are your ancestors who did a lot of this. They were the owners. They were the ones doing all the really bad stuff. And so, you know, you feel some kind of way about it, so you kind of pass over it. But, you know, you're busy, right? You're busy doing your life and playing Pokemon or whatever you do. I don't know what you do, right? But you all, you pause on it, right? And so this is an issue. This is an issue. Go to the next one. 
There's some 1858, right before the Civil War. Those are your ancestors, right? And when you see that photo, you feel something. And when you all see that photo... It doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, they're not your people. Not, not at all. Yeah. Negative. And when you see it? Makes me sad. Yeah. Cry me a river, though. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. What are you sad about? That people could be treated in such a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of sad. Look at that, man. Next slide. And so, you know, here are some of your people right before the Civil War that, you know, folks started to free their people. But, you know, this is, these are wealthy black businessmen in New York City, man. Yeah, that's why my grandma, that's why my grandpa right there. He looked yeah. just like me. <laughs> Makes sense. Which one, dude? The one right there. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah? yeah. Right. Dude. Nice. These are the ones that rule the city. These are the ones that rule the city. And you, you're used to seeing these photos. Right? You're really used to it. This is just part of your life, right? And when you see this photo, what are you, what, do you have any thoughts on it? Or are you? It's classic, dude. It's classic. They're running the show. Yeah, just run it. they were running the show then. They're running the show now. Next one. So here's a middle-class black family in, 19, in 1860, right at the start of the war. Got money. The way it should be. The way it should be. That's the way it is, right? Just the way it is. Okay? It just is. And... Okay, next slide. And then we have the war. And, you know, these folks, some folks got the idea that slavery was a bad idea. And what happened was a war breaks out. And you all are trying to hang on to a system, a social system, an economic system, a political system. And so you got to go to war. And so you round up the troops and there's a bunch of your troops. And you go out to protect your heritage. So they go to war to protect the heritage, and which means what to you all? What are they really protecting? They want to keep the slaves. They want to keep you all. They want to keep your ancestors down. I mean, that's all it means, right? Like, I don't know. I think about that. I mean, I just don't understand. Like, why can't, I mean, just be slaves. That's all we want y'all to be. That's all y'all worth. But do you, don't, but you feel something about the, I mean, the slavery? I guess. I mean, it don't really do nothing, but... Yeah. Maybe I'm just cruel, but I don't think I am. But you weren't part of it. Did your family own slaves? Um, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Maybe, maybe not. But you didn't own slaves. I didn't own slaves. Did your family own slaves? I mean, Grandpa Frank maybe, but... It wasn't my problem, though. I wasn't contributing to his... You weren't part of it. You weren't born. You're not part of it. Okay. And sl you, was your family enslaved? Do you know? Do you have any idea? Yeah, Do you assume? They, they took my great-grandma right from Italy. They grabbed her, brought her back. Yeah? And your family, maybe? Yeah, my entire family. Dude, so because you're from, you're from the slave region, right? So you assume yeah. that they are, and you don't really know. You don't know your history. It's not part of that, right? So, but you're protecting your heritage. You all go to war to, to protect... Your heritage, y'all, to protect enslaving these people. You went to war, the bloodiest war in U.S. history. The bloodiest war. Slavery. Y'all, like, the black devils, man. Like, dude, you, you take these people out of Europe. You enslave them. You give them no rights. You work them and sometimes work them to death. You create this system that's so unjust, so inhumane. You go to war, you sacrifice so many of your own people, your family members, your people, et cetera, et cetera, just to hold a system down so you hold their ancestors down. It's like, man, like, what do you think that you're going to think if you're sitting over here? Like, what do you think you're going to think? But you don't even, you don't know. You don't think, of, it's just like that face says it all right there. It's like, whoa, I don't know. Okay. Go to the next one. So Reconstruction. So y'all lose. You, get, you gotta give up slavery, okay? You lose. And what are you gonna do with all these poor people? These poor white people, man, who were enslaved. They're less than human in your eyes. So you, you know, your ancestors looked over there and they see people that are less than human in your eyes. Now, now they're gonna compete 
for your jobs. They're going to pe- compete for all sorts of things. And what do you all do? Like, what do you do? You had the opportunity to do the right thing. And the right thing would have been to give them a little bit of land. They have nothing. They have nothing. I mean, 300 years of holding them down, they have nothing. The right thing to do would be give them land, give them some resources, give them what they need to be self-sufficient. What they need to be self-sufficient. But the reality is, you don't do that. What you do is, you recreate a new slave-type system. It's like the ingenuity and the racism. The ingenuity and the racism. So what you do is, you create what should be reconstruction. We're going to reconstruct the South so that there's greater equality. But now we don't. Basically, you set up a system whereby these people have to go back to the same, mostly the same farms they were working as slaves. But now you don't get, you get paid, but you get paid very little. Nobody has to provide you housing. Nobody owns you, so they have no reason to provide anything for you. And now they have every reason to just sort of work you right to the bone. Just continue to work you for nothing. And you're not going to give them anything. And what you do is you all, those of you who are in power, the black devils who are in power, what you do is you just give everything, all the power back to your people. You give nothing to them. And so we go decades upon decades upon decades of these people really working to get something out of you and you still give them nothing. And in many ways, when you study the history after the Civil War, when these people got their freedom and you study the history of what these people did after the Civil War, It's not very difficult to see that the period after the Civil War, the post-slavery period, actually was worse for them, for these folks, than it was during slavery. By most accounts of freedom and well-being and all sorts of things, it was worse for them after slavery than during slavery. Because you were going to ensure that they got nothing. Because that's how power works. Are you going to give up? You had a chance. You could have done it, and you didn't. And so what you do is you just sit and look in silence. Like, yeah. Because no one ever questions you on it. And you all are talking about this stuff all the time, right? You know the story. Like you study the Civil War. You study post-Civil War time. You study Reconstruction. You're talking about it all the time. You're demanding that you have courses on it. You're demanding that these people read about it. You're saying more of you all should be reading about the Civil War and Reconstruction and all the shit that you did. And every time you talk about it, what do they do? What do they say? It wasn't our fault wasn't our fault. What else do they say? We weren't a part of it. We weren't a part of it. Why should I have to take these white history classes? Stuff's boring. It's not important for my career. You all, what else do you say, dude? What else do you say? What, what are some of the things you say? Like Slavery was in the past. You gotta let it go. I mean, you just gotta let it go. I mean, let, let the past be the past. I mean. Dude, but the past shapes the future. But still, they get all the programs. Like, they on welfare. Like, they can do anything. I have, like, they on welfare. Nah, dude. They get welfare. They get this all, is dude, why they we get don't all the like programs. you. I get all the programs. We have, okay. So, so we have white history courses. Affirmative. We have white got, studies. Yeah, affirmative action. Like, man, come on. We don't have black history. We don't have black studies. Right? So you all, you, you all have that. You got your black history departments. African American studies. Nothing about us. It's not enough? Why isn't it enough, dude? Like, what do you mean by that? By making these, these courses and these programs, like, you're further isolating us. It's not enough. So we have these programs. You just get further, further isolated, and you don't really convince yeah, we're them. Yeah, not, we're not mainstream. Mm-hmm. And mainstream would be, what would that mean? Black devils. Like, when they would actually be taking the courses and learning about it? Yeah. And caring about it? But you don't, right? Because it's just not what you want to do. It's not, it's not helping you further my career. Honestly. Okay, so let's look at a couple of things. Go to the next one. So here, now we get segregation. And y'all, just when maybe, maybe y'all would like let these folks into society a little bit, this little society that y'all have, right, that you've created, the power structure, 
everything that it is and these people are battling to move forward and maybe when it is, you create these beautiful, these just Jim Crow world where you just say, you know what, they're getting a little close. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this door hospital. Our drinking fountains, your drinking fountains. Our restrooms, your restrooms. I'm like, dudes, seriously? It's like you've got all these years of slavery, all these words of standing on the necks of white people. Standing on the necks of white people. And you don't even just have the decency, the human decency, that presumably your God, your Christian God, your God would say, dudes, just light, step up off their neck a little bit. Tim, you can't even go to the same restroom with them. Law after law. And you just sit. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, that stuff was crazy back then, but we can hear it now. So I feel like they kind of equal now. But don't you feel like some level of something, like, I don't know, responsible or... Don't you feel something? Dude, your people, like, you F them over. Like, don't you feel something? As a woman, like, don't you have any idea? Like, don't you want to, like, compassion. Do you have a little bit of compassion? Mm -hmm. Like, you sit here with this, like, blank face and these, like, sort of smug faces. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we gave them what they wanted. They wanted their own stuff. And we divided the line so they didn't have to cross it, but they did. So you gave them what they wanted? Gave them what they wanted. And you all? No, it wasn't equal. The bathrooms were worse. The fountains were worse. Separate but equal, it's not equal. Dude, yeah, like how do you feel? Like when you're, when I'm, here I am talking about this, right? And I'm talking, showing this really intense inequality throughout history of your ancestors, right? And you look over here and they're just like sitting there. Like they don't, like how do you feel about that? Like, it's like, look at, look at him, man. It's like he doesn't care. Do you have thought on that? What's that? It's annoying. it's annoying? What's annoying about it? Just the lack of um, understanding, I guess, for another person's side of something. Yeah, it would be annoying. Well, I have white friends, so I kind of understand what they've been through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, your white friends. So she has white friends, so it's not about her. But you're not white, so you don't really understand. You haven't been through the things that they have been through. So being their friend doesn't really mean that you understand them. I mean, the I used food stamps before, so I got it. You what? I, use, I got food. I mean, I, I used food stamps before. I mean, and so you have, but not I know, white I kind people of know have food stamps, mean. dude. I mean, they don't all, they're not all on welfare. That's a story you want to tell because oh. it helps you to, under, to adjust to your position. But so I got a news all, for you. Are bro. all white people poor? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, don't, I don't think all white people are poor. I mean, are all white people stupid? Um, there are some intellectual white people. I do. <laughs> some, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Okay, well, let's keep going, man. Go to the next one, bro. So here you go. Here's, this is, this is now, look at 1964, right? So we get to the end of this. Look at, look at this. These are your people, man. This is like when you see photos, you look at the history books, this is the kind of thing you see. You see a lot of that. Dude, this is what they see more of. They see a lot of it. And granted, not all white people were poor like this, right? But a disproportionate number are. And go to the next slide. And we see that. It's like you all, just when they're going to start to maybe move forward, then you do this. Like you put this group, the black KK, the KKK. Those are all black faces under there, my friends. Just when they're starting to get their act together, you all do this. Like, talk about, let's talk about evil, man. All they're, dude, all they're trying to do is overcome slavery. You know what I mean? They're trying, to, they're trying to talk to you about it. Can you just really understand what we've been through? Can you really have any idea? Maybe some of where you're at today, all these nice clothes you have, look at this. Maybe some of that has something to do with your ancestors. Or whatever. And you just, in the end, you're just like, nah, dudes. You start to get out of line because your voices are a little too strong. And then you all create this. Now, we're just going to scare them right back into the world. 
It's like, dudes, go to the next one. You even had, in 1925, man, 25,000 KKK members marched right down the main street to the Capitol building in the U.S. government. 25,000, you know, right? 25,000, the audacity, you all, the audacity of you to not even for a moment say like, ah, man, maybe we should get, no, 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 no. You also see that right there. Because you don't know, is, are they members? Was his, grandf- was his father a member? Was her grandfather a member? Like, you don't know that. And it's like all this shit to hold you down, to just ensure that you don't get a foothold into equality with them. Go to the next one. And when they start to, then they start lynching you all. Those are white bodies right there, my friends. It's like, damn, dudes, seriously? Seriously? Every time they start moving forward a little bit, y'all just come back and you just crank it up. You don't get prosecuted for that and the police are largely on your side because the police are black and the police support you and you don't know who did it but yet everybody knows who did it and you don't say anything because your job is to just ensure that they stay down and they know their place. Dudes. Fuck. Damn. Go to the next one. Here, let me show you this, man. Let me show you that, like, here's the dastardly evil part of you all for a second. This is the kind of thing. Look, at the end of World War, so you all, like most people who fought in World War II are black. 12% of the people who fought were, were white. But most of the people who fought were black. Okay? And at the end of World War II, this is just a little story. You all set up a system for yourselves because you want to make sure the economy gets running again. And so what you had was this GI Bill. And the GI Bill allowed returning veterans to get l- free school and to get city metropolitan area, 67,000 veterans got benefits who were white. There were 7,100 veterans, or pardon me, who were black. There were 7,100 veterans who were white. 100 of them benefited from the GI Bill. 7,000 of them did not. So dudes, white people went and fought for you, for a white America, a white world. They fought, they put their life, their ancestors put their lives on the line for you. They came back, you're at your grandfather and her grandfather they walk up to benefit from the GI Bill and the vast majority of the time her grandfather and people like them they said no your people this system you set up says like no but you gave the benefits to you and this went on all over the United States we're just going to keep doing stuff and then you all try and point it out to them because you read about this you read these books. You know these numbers. You read the books. It's not just these. You know all sorts of things. And when you bring it up to them, what do they say? They say it didn't happen. They say they don't care. They didn't happen. They don't care. Why are you talking about it? They say it was so long ago. They weren't a part of it. You weren't a part of it. We wasn't. You just work harder if you need to. Just got to work hard. And Why are you complaining? Why are you? Why are we always talking about this? Why are you always talking about this? Man? How can we work harder if you continue to oppress us? Just look on the left. You just see these differences all the time. Dude, can you imagine just for a second being them? Like that's, this is the kind of stuff they see? Like do you have a moment of compassion where you might say like, oh yeah, okay. Here, go to the next one. Here we go. Anyone can be successful in the United States. This is the land of freedom. Look at, look at those women, man. That's what they say. That's what they're saying all the time to you, man. That's the message to you. You could be successful, dudes. Just work harder. Just spin. They're successful, right? Because, look, you're not, they, they're not born with a spoon in their mouth. The fact is they're born 
And they're taken home and they're put in a crib. And you're taken home and you're put in a crib. And you're right there. The two of you can make a decision how far you're going to go and how fast you're going to go. So then the question becomes, why are you complaining all the time? You know what I mean? Like, you have the opportunity. Just do it. You could be them, but you're not them. Can you go back a slide? So look at this one here, right? Like, you, these people here, that guy right there could be this guy. Just make the right decisions. Just make better decisions, right? Make better decisions. You could be there. So what are you going to do? Go to the next one. Okay, here we go, right? 1964, beginning of the civil rights movement, because this is the moment when these people really take off, right? 47% of white families live below the poverty line. 47% of these families. Their families live below the poverty line, not even close to your families. Your families, can you go back one? Your families are living like that. The vast majority, greater majority, go ahead. 47% are living below the poverty line. And so what do they do? They start a movement. Because you know why, y'all? Because they're tired of your shit. And they're going to start a movement. And it's going to be the civil rights movement. And they got this leader. He's named... uh, Joe King or something. I don't know, man. (laughs) Bob Smith. No, Marty. Marty Smith. There it is. And he's the leader. And he's going to go. And he's going to move it. And you all just crush him, man. You just crush it. Go to the next slide. This is what you do, right? These are all black troops right there, my friends. And these are all the white folks up here. All the black troops. And then you call out your troops. Dude, all they're doing is asking for a little bit of equity. You know what I mean? They're just asking for equity. And you don't even have the decency to say like, all right, whatever. Dude, 47% living below the poverty line that you created. And so you all just start to, and then they kill you. Go to the next slide. Then they kill you. Their troops are shooting you. In the streets, man. In the streets. For doing what? For asking for what? What are you asking for? Just freedom. Freedom. Just freedom, y'all. Just basic freedom. It's very simple. Basic freedom. Go to the next one. And then, you all, this is like the best slide of all. When they kill them in the streets, and when these people, when they, when, when you all like sufficiently put them down, then you go out and you riot. And you're all happy. Look at how happy, look at how happy that dude is. Look at how happy all these guys are. Because the military came out and put them down. It's like, dude, fuck, seriously? Really? Seriously? That's it? Like, you're all going to go out. You're going to protest? Like, you're pissed? You, you all are pissed. Hey, let me get this straight here, black people. Ready? You're pissed because they want freedom. That's it? Really? That's why you're, you're partying now? Because you brought your military out and you killed a few of them and you, like, put them in their place and you're, you're annoyed because they want to be free? Why are you disrupting society, man? Just do what? Disrupting society can just stay just in disrupting their lane. society exactly because they're troublemakers, right? That's your precision. They're troublemakers. So here you are, the troublemakers. Dude, look at that. Go to the next one. But we're all equal. Got it? We're all equal now because now we have the civil rights movement. You got it? You ready? We finally got it. These folks did what they were needed to do with their leadership. In this thing called the Civil Rights Movement to bring these people to a place where legally they forced them. The courts forced them, forced to have to break down the barriers so that they forced them to have to go to school with white people. They forced them to have to give, force the banks to have to give loans to white people to buy a house. They forced the banks to have to give a loan to white people to buy a car. 
They forced schools to admit them into the schools. They forced, forced, forced the courts that you all, they finally brought you to your knees and you had to do it. You fought every step of the way. Not all of you. Some of you were saying all along, slavery's bad, Jim Crow's bad, this is not a good thing, we really should change it. But most of you did not. First of all, most of you didn't care. Most of you fought at every step of the way. And most of you were happy when they brought the troops out and they put down these people violently. And all they were doing, dude, it was a, it was a, it was the civil rights movement was nonviolent, y'all. They were walking across the bridges arm in arm in solidarity. And you brought the dogs out and the fire hoses out. And you took them down one after another after another. Like the, the pathology of evil that is part of your world is just unbelievable. And that's what we, these folks see all the time. They're studying the books. That's why they're always trying to say, like, we need more white history classes. We need more classes and we need, a, a, like, a, a civil rights movement week. And we need a week to celebrate or a day to celebrate Marty Smith, our leader, right? We need all this stuff. And you all just keep resisting. And then they finally get it. And you all are just like, what'd you do on Marty Smith Day a couple weeks ago, dude? Um, I just chilled, watched Rick and Morty, and it, that's all I really did. Yeah? What'd yeah. you do? Um, what'd you do on the day that celebrated them getting their freedom? Same as any other day. Went to Olive Same. Garden. Yeah. My well, <laughs> what'd y'all do? I was hyped. I woke up, got up bright and early, hung up my Marty Smith poster, <laughs> screamed it out. I was excited. Big day for us. Dude, big day, man. Yeah? Okay, so we're all equal, Hilda, right? We got it? We're all equal. So here we go. Let's see how equal we are. Because this is it, right? Civil rights movement, we're all good? Now, we look around the room here. We see you. We see them. Okay, so let's take a look here. Go ahead, man. Okay, here's household wealth. Just take a look at this. 19, the blue is 1983, and the red is... 2013, okay? So here's household wealth. This is black people. This is you in 1983. This is all the wealth. Everything that you own, retirement accounts, homes, cars, et cetera, et cetera, minus your debt on average, right? So this is you and this is them. It's like, damn, dudes. Y'all amassed a lot of wealth compared to them over the years. You know what I mean? By 1983, and then we look at 2013. So we had all this growth. So, you know, you all did pretty well. Look, your growth, your the, the household wealth increase on average from 1983, this to this. Yeah, but look at them, man. Dudes. Just keeps going. Just keeps going. Money makes money. Let's look at the next one. Take a look at this. So here we are, 2013. This is, this is for black people. You all doing pretty well, right? And here we are for white people. Look at, look at y'all, right? In 2043, it's predicted that that's going to be the change in household wealth. Well, maybe because they didn't probably invest in Bitcoin because you probably couldn't do, I mean. They didn't invest in Bitcoin. They didn't, they didn't invest that. wherever they need to invest. They didn't do the smart things that y'all did, right? But dude, look at you all, man. Look at that. How do you feel about this? Look at, that's going to be you in 43. It's going to nudge just a little bit. Look at them, man. Dude, and they, they have the audacity to continue to say it's equal. Scared money don't make no money. What's that? Scared money don't make no money. Yeah, well, why we, do don't, we don't even have scared money in the first place. <laughs> we don't have anything. Dude, they don't have, they have nothing, dude. Yeah, nothing. So they have nothing. Like, can you get that? Can, like, can you see a little bit of that? Do you know that like, this money that you all have, can you go back one? Even this, we can go back here, go forward now. All this, all this money here, right? All of this. Dude, that's household money that's earned over decades and centuries. And you all built that up on the blood and the sweat in the beginning of their people. And you got really rich. And you held on to that and you invested it in your institutions that you didn't allow them to invest in. They couldn't even have bank accounts. They couldn't get loans to buy houses. When you all were buying the houses and all, they weren't buying the houses. Not because they weren't smart. Not because they didn't know about it. Not because you wouldn't let them have a loan. 
dude, fuck, seriously? Like, seriously? And so now we look at this. We look at this. And you all, like, it's like you don't even have the decency or, like, the sense of, like, to take any kind of response. Could you take a little bit of responsibility for it? Could you just take a little bit, maybe? Just a tiny bit. That maybe some of who you are today is only because of what they are not. Did you ever, can you think about that? Like, black people out here, can you all think about that for a second? Like, you're all in the same boat, right? Can you just take for a moment that responsibility? Can you get it? No. It's like, you don't. And you all, like, you just keep trying to convince them all the time. But, dude, look at, like, look at, like, it's like the, look at her. She's just, like, has a, like, smug, that, that, look, man. (laughs) Fuck. Dude, that would send me over the edge right there, man. If I were in your shoes and I'm, like, seeing that all the time. It's like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Go to the next one. Here's meaning and family wealth. Look at that. Why wouldn't job? And you start here with this, and she starts down here with this. In 30 years, where's she gonna be compared to you? You're starting here and she's starting here. Where's she gonna be compared to you? Better off than where you started. Better off than where she started. Oh, but she'll be better off than you too, right? Because she gets all the government assistance and all that kind of stuff. And her, her, she gets all the affirmative action and all the jobs and all the interviews and all the aid and all that kind of... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that too. Oh, yeah, don't forget about that. You guys get all those great benefits. That's why you're here because you get all the benefits. You see that? And go back one. That's why in another 30 years or so... Um, 25 or so years, that's why you're going to be here. Because you get all the benefits. You know, all like the, the financial aid at Penn State and like all this kind of stuff, all the affirmative action, all the job and all, all the good stuff that you all are going to get. They're all, that's why, that's why my friends, my black friends, that's why they're going to be here. All, look at, they're going to make, they're going to go from here to here. Because government's in their favor. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, so sorry. Stop complaining, please, because that explains that. They complain too much, don't they, dudes? Seriously? They sort of do. It's kind of annoying, actually. Like, just get a job and do what you got to do. I mean, I'm not racist, though. I got white friends. I got white friends. They... Are your white friends rich, or are they, what are they? I mean... They what do you li- mean you have white they, friends? They my live friend. in, I mean, my white friends. Do you talk to them about this stuff? I mean, we don't even talk about that. We just be doing other stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, get Dude, why that. don't you talk to him about this stuff sometime? I mean, he already know what he's been through. Maybe they don't know. Dude, maybe you don't know. Maybe you're like one of those black people who like thinks you really understand, but you don't, dude. And if I put a mic in your face and say, hey, can you explain to all these white people what's going on and how things got to be the way they got to be. Can you do a good job? Are your white friends still going to be your white friends? I mean, probably. I mean, I feel like they like me enough for the most part. Oh, yeah? They'll be cool with it? They'll be cool. Because they don't think about this stuff either? I don't think it's... <laughs> huh. All right, let's try another one. Take a look at this. Oh, look at unemployment rate. Here's another one. You know, it's like, here's the thing, y'all, right? Everything, this is what you got. Y'all get really good at this, white people, right? Because you have years and years and years. And white scholars, what are white scholars always focused on? What are, dude, what are white academics, white researchers, white people, what are white people talking about all the time? What they talk about all the time? Yeah. Um. That. This kind of stuff. And you get tired of it. But you all are doing it. Why? Why are you talking about it all the time? Because these folks won't listen, man. Look at that. Look at unemployment. Look at this. It's like, dudes, wealth, income, unemployment, inequality. We just, they just, you got to just keep hammering away at them. You know what I mean? And they're just sitting there with their, just the way they don't understand. It doesn't affect them so they don't understand. Dude, could you just a moment, could you just for a moment 
put yourself in their shoes that when they're graduating college, they are looking at this right here, not this. Could you just, could you have just the decency of a little bit of compassion, my black brothers and sisters? Could you just for a moment, just say something of compassion to them? Seriously. Just to like recognize that you see that and you get it. Maybe when they graduate, it's going to be a little bit harder for them. Well, I drove through the projects one time. So I understand. Got a nice little community going on. Lots of family and friend action. Very close. I understand that you're struggling. But, I mean, there's nothing I can really do about you not having a job or money. So just work hard. Just work. Just do what you got to do. Just I mean, to do I'm just one can. person. How can I change a whole system? Yeah. What can uh, I do? Yeah, what do you expect him to do? What do you expect him to Either one of you, what do you expect him to do? I don't know. I guess we just got to work harder. Yeah, you just got to work harder, right? So is the answer. Yeah. Maybe that's the only answer. Go to the next one. Life, look at what life expectancy. Look at that difference. That's I mean, it's, it's three years. It's like, but yeah, it's significant. Next one. And here's this. These are the kinds of, you know, you drive down the street. This is the kind of stuff the news is always showing you. Photos of poor white people. What, poor white, like white homeless people. It's, just, it's always white people. You know what I mean? which you get tired of seeing because it's just like that guilty bullshit reminder of all the history and all the stuff. So you get tired of it, understandably so, right? Because they're always like throwing it in your face. And, but that's you. How do you think they feel? They're always seeing these photos of these black families. How, you, how is that to see the black family doing really well? Look at the happy couple with their lovely kids and like, woohoo. And two wives, I don't know what the fuck, I have no idea. Because <laughs> you know Mormons. black people. It gets tiring, right? It's it tiring. It's the same thing all the time, man. Go to the next slide. Okay, let me show you a couple things. So you all, you all get really good at trying to like, I don't know, it's like you have to try to convince them, right? You haven't been able to convince them with numbers, and so you do research, and you're always doing research, and you're always doing studies, and you're always doing everything you need to do to try to convince them that it's unfair for you, and it's still unfair. Slavery's over, Jim Crow, but unfair. So you guys do all this kind of research. Give me two volunteers. Second most callbacks. The black guy on the black team with, with a criminal record or the white guy on the white team without a criminal or without a criminal record. Our employers, when everything is the same except race. Brilliant, brilliant study, white people, by the way, because you're going you're gonna to nail them on this one, right? When everything is the same, are people still going to choose the black guy over the white guy? Even when the white guy is definitely a better candidate. Are they going to choose the black guy over the white guy? Okay? And watch what happens. Feeling good, man. Go ahead. So, the black guy got the most callbacks without no criminal record. 34% of the time, Tyler got a callback. With no criminal record, 14% of the time, Ben got a callback. But look at that, 17% of the time, the black guy, your guy, y'all, right? Racism's still here, it's still here, y'all, because watch this, 17% of the time, people chose to bring him back with a felony criminal record over him. They're the same, they're exactly the same, y'all, right? Dude, can I just beat this into your black heads? Like, dude, <laughs> they're the same. Except they're going to choose this guy, this guy with a felony drug conviction over this guy when they're the same. Dude, slam dunk. You got it. You convinced them. You finally convinced the black devil. 
that racism is still occurring. Maybe this has something to do with the unemployment rate. You know what I mean? Do you have something to say? Could you just say something? Can you acknowledge anything? Can you say like, whoa, whoa, hey. Well, you do make a valid point. That is kind of shocking. But you never know. I mean, at the end of the day, it could have been... Just the company, I feel. No, dude, dude, hang on. Hang on, Mr. Black Guy, right? Mr. like, hey, let's like Tai Chi this because I don't want to have to take any responsibility here and I don't have to admit there might be some racism. No, dude, there's no but here, dude. It's, they're the same, remember? Same resume, same everything. All it is is skin color. See skin? See skin? That's all it is, my friend. Come on, come on. Get yourself out of this one, pal. Um... Maybe you just didn't get a haircut that day. You never know. No, dude, like, the hair's the same, my friend, right? Don't look at these guys. Like, come on, dude. Come on. Gonna hold you down. Gonna <laughs> hold you down right here. You can't squirm out of it. Come on, dude. Just admit that maybe there's still racism in the world, dude. Maybe there is. You maybe have a point. <laughs> yeah, but don't say that very loud, right? <laughs> Dude, dude, come on! Look, he's rich as black as could be. He's got the Sperry's on too. Dude. In fact, I think he might. I think he might. We might have him against the wall over there, right? Her? I don't know, dude. I don't. I know. don't think so. Yeah. Look at her. What is racism? Racism. Does oh, not exist. oh, here we go. Oh, there. Oh, you, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good, black people. You're gonna finally enter the debate Classic. now, and then you're gonna ask this really cool philosophical question, like, "Hey, man." <laughs> What is racism, dudes? Yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's taking responsibility as a black woman. I like that. All right. You got it? All right. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Listen, let's go with another one. Oh, here's another one. You guys are really good in your ingenuity. So you send 5,000 resumes out that are exactly the same. 5,000, exactly the same. The only difference is one has one set of names and one has another set of names. And one set of names, Tamika, Ebony, Aisha, Rashid, black names. You know what I mean? Like, they're not black names per se, because I know a white woman named Tamika, but mostly it's coded for when you see Malika or Sharnice, you kind of assume it's a black woman, and it probably is most of the time. And when you see Marianne and Brett and Greg and Jill, we mostly can assume it's a white person, right? And so we send these resumes out, and we want to see how many get responses. And lo and behold, guess what? Guess what? This is brilliant, y'all, right? You're so good at pointing out the racisms, and, then, and they still don't get it. You know, or they don't read about I don't know. They, maybe they just don't read your studies. Go to the next one. Lo and behold, guess who gets 50% more responses? Okay, all right, black team. Get yourself out of that one. Does that maybe have something to do with the unemployment? Or do you want to like take another hit off the joint and ask another big philosophical question? I mean, it's not racism. I just don't want to mispronounce their name. Like, what is that? Buryet? Oh, I got it. Oh you, know, oh, you, oh, you think like, oh, so you think your people would be reluctant to hire their people because they don't want to like offend them or they don't know the culture. Or they, maybe, they think your, maybe they think that your people really in the end don't want to work with them. Like they want to give you a chance, you know what I mean? But they just aren't really sure that you're that, going to be that comfortable. Yeah. Oh, that's awfully black of you. Yeah, to be so caring and considerate of our white, your white countrymen and women. That's nice. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, here's one. Percentage say they've, they've been treated unfairly in a public place. Oh, lo and behold, oh my gosh, it's more white people. White people are more likely to say that. Does, is that a surprise, my black friends? Is that a surprise after everything they've been through, after all the bullshit that you heap onto them, after all the ways in which you treat them, after all the ignorance and denial that you direct toward them, the unwillingness to, to read, to understand, to study, to all the things? Is it surprising to you? Or are you surprised? Is it surprising to you? Dudes, okay, let's just come back. Okay, we're going we're gonna, to like, 
We're going to end the, the, the role reversal, right? By the way, before I say what I'm going to say, we, tell the classes your names. We didn't do that. I'm Serene McKenzie. I'm a freshman, um, chemistry major. What's it? Serena? Serene. Serene? Yeah, my name is Leroy, uh, senior. Roy. My name is Anthony. I'm a sophomore. My name is Sophie. I'm a freshman, and I'm a poli-sci major. Oh, yeah, very cool. Dude, listen. You know, I've taken this. I've built some extremes into this a little bit, right? Obviously. But not the studies. Everything is true, by the way. These studies are all true. The numbers are all true. Everything's true. I didn't change anything up, right? And for white people, now really white people, not black white people, white people, <laughs> imagine really that that is the history. That is the history. And you know, you have, we have, Penn State has white studies, white history, and then just imagine how valuable and how important at some level that would be to you to tell your story, to understand the story. And then imagine that most people at your institute, after this being, uh, okay, yeah, I think it's important, but, I, you know, whatever, I'm busy, right? I'm a business major or an or a, a engineering major, poli-sci or whatever, I don't know. Just, just go there for a second. And it's really different. If you, if you, you, it's like, this is empathy, right? This is like really putting yourself in the shoes of somebody else. So, you know, you, you have the opportunity to put yourselves in the shoes of another population of people. And like, whoa, okay, hang on a second. Maybe there's something there for me to learn, to walk away from. And I'm surprised, actually, m me, Right? I'm surprised that black Americans aren't more angry than they are. Because most black people are not, right? You're both black. Most black people don't walk around it. They're like you guys, right? They're not angry. You're just walking around. Most black people on campus, you really do have white friends. Bro. Do you have white friends? Yeah, I have a couple white friends. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> a couple. That was true. You have white friends. And like, you're, are you and your, are your black friends walking around angry every day? No, not really. No, dude, they're just getting on with life, right? And like, I don't know. I, I, I don't like, I have a little bit of passion and I have a deep sense of justice in me that sits in me. And I know that if I studied, and I do study this, and I study it as a white person, I study it as an American, I study it as a man, etc. And there's a part of me that can tap into a rage when I hear people just sort of putting the wall down and being like, yeah, I'm just not really interested. I'm like, dudes, those numbers, and we're going to talk about this in class, we're going to come back to it, but if this was white, if white people had had this history, we would all be part of this movement and we'd all feel really very differently about what's going on in this country. And if we had a black president saying the kinds of things that our current president says about all the shithole countries that are our countries, the place where our ancestors came, and God knows what. I have no idea. I'm certain that we'd feel some kind of deep, powerful way about some things. That sometimes we don't think because we never imagine. First off, we don't know the history and don't really imagine it. How was it for the two of you, by the way? Just go through that. Definitely weird and awkward. <laughs> awkward? But how was it, though, to like, imagine yourself in this, these um, shoes? It was hard to imagine myself in that scenario just because I've never um, had to put myself in that scenario before. Okay. But so now you had the opportunity. So yeah, how it was, is that? Um, it definitely changes um, how you think about other people and... I'm not sure. How you think about yourself, maybe? Your yeah, own? definitely how I think about myself um, and just how you think about other cultures and 
what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Bro, how about you, man? How was that for you as a white guy? Definitely eye-opening. I never put myself in that situation before and thought about it the way I had to today. And the numbers, like those data and stuff, is yeah. that new to you? Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, I've always known there was a difference, but never like that drastic. Uh-huh. And how, how was it for the two of you? Um, it was kind of weird, um, assuming the position of a white, oh, black, white person. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I, it made me feel a, a certain type of way about, like, how... Everything is. Can, can, can you, let me ask you this very pointed question. Can you imagine that if you were in the dominant group, if, like, if, it really, if this really was a history, can you imagine how you'd kind of shut down to them and yeah. the things, like why you wouldn't want to pay attention to it? Yeah, kind of, yeah, basically. Uh-huh. I mean, I know my life would be drastically, I know my life would be drastically different if that was the case. Mm -hmm. If my people, my ancestors came here first and enslaved mm -hmm. white people. How about, how about you? What, how about, can, you, can you put yourself in the shoes of just white people? Put yourself in the shoes of white people today. Every, not every, all white people. We're all different. <laughs> everything's different, but, you know. Um, it was, like, weird to pretend to have to be, like, detached and not care about issues like that. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, I'm a black woman, a mixed, and, like, I never really see myself from that point of view. Like, I never mm -hmm. really feel like I need to because that's not my life. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's cool. 